the reason I, I tell that story is because I think it helps un- paint a picture of like, why is isolation actually bad? Why is chronic inflammation bad? Well, right. it's to the detriment of the function of your organs, your so, brain, I, but The heart. two words you haven't used yet, but we've all heard it in our lives, and it feels like it derives exactly out of everything you're saying. And it's, are you extroverted or introverted? Mm. That's what it sounds like you're describing. And taken to its extremes, extroverts will live longer than introverts with less disease and and overall greater happiness. Or would they? Or would they? They do. Yeah. It seems that they do. Yeah. They, I mean, there are studies showing that extroverts are generally happier. First off, is the chicken or the egg? Are they so extroverted because they're so happy all the time and they just want to talk? Or is it that they're talking more? Well, if you ask people who are extroverted to talk more with others and, and be more extroverted, they their mood even improves. So it seems that the that mood benefits are related to the... Um, the extroversion, but as for the health benefits, so this is where it gets delicate because to tell the average person, go spend every afternoon socializing, right? Get coffee with friends, see friends all the time. For someone who is more introverted, hmm. that is not a healthy prescription. Right. That's that's stress right there. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. What am I going to wear? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking to him anymore. <laughs> it's like, right. So it's, it's all sorts of dynamics in there. Yeah. But for an extrovert, that actually probably will be good for them and extend their lives. And, you know, there's a, a recent report that came out on these super agers, these people who are... Um, Live you know, to 100. They're not necessarily, they're like living to 200 years old, but that they are, I think, 80 and above. But if you scan their brains, their brains look closer to 60-year-olds. Oh, they wow. are interesting. They're resistant to aging, the traditional path of aging. Very cool. And what's amazing is that the one unifying trait amongst these super agers is that they're all extroverts and that they all claim to live very social lives. And, you know, this paper came out and um, every single metric that they looked at made perfect sense. Like all the, they did all this brain imaging and it made perfect sense. They showed lower levels of inflammation. You know, they showed thicker uh, certain brain areas. And it, it makes sense that as you're continuing to, to live a social lifestyle and you're exercising these brain areas because socializing is indeed a, an exercise for the brain. It's like a workout for your muscles. But if it causes stress to an introvert, that can't be good for them. Right. Okay. So we're weaving a lot of topics together here. So I want to separate them. So introverted people still benefit from socializing, but the sort of threshold of where that becomes unhealthy or unpleasant is way lower. Mm. So if you have an introverted person, let's say come into this room right now and pretend to be an extrovert for 10 minutes, you know, they're going to, they're going to leave and, exhausted. <laughs> well, no, actually that's what you'd think they're, I mean, they'd probably kick and scream on the way in and please, I, you know, I don't want to do that, right. but they would actually feel better afterwards because gotcha. there's only 10 minutes. Okay. Mm. But if you ask them to do the same thing and say, okay, for the next week of your life, pretend you're extroverted, do just the same thing you just did. They are going to be miserable at the end of it. But if you have an extrovert do that, just like the 10 minute period, they're going to feel great after. And after a week, they're still going to feel great. Uh. And so it's like, you know, people talk about their social battery. You can sort of think of it as introverts have a smaller social battery that charges up faster and... And depletes faster. Then. And, well, extroverts... No, extroverts, introverts, battery. I'm saying. Yeah, so introverts' battery charges up faster and actually depletes slower because okay. then they need to be recharged less frequently. Is it about learning your own limit as to what social interaction... Because you can have, even for an extrovert, there can be too much social interaction. Yes, absolutely. So there's trait extroversion measures. People often think that, oh, I can be, you know, introverted in the morning and extroverted in the afternoon. But the truth is everybody has a very stable level of trait extroversion. The higher you score on extroversion, the higher your social intake should be basically to make you happy. Mm -hmm. The more tolerant you are, the larger your social battery is. And so the more capacity you have. for Right. Right. Okay. And the more energy, you know, the more energy you get from interacting, the more you can tolerate before you get frustrated and, and want to be alone. So I actually, in, the, in my book, I have a, a trade extroversion scale um, that people can take and then sort of figure out where they land on that. And then the second sort of practice that I... It's a little quiz that you can take. Yeah. And it's 20 questions. It's things like, some of them you'd obvious, are obvious, like, oh, I... How you come know, it's not 19 questions or 17 questions? Um, this Because the scientists in this case decided to be trendy, you know? <laughs> I'm just, I always wondered when there's a nice round number of fundamental questions. They probably threw in a few extra just to make it easy to remember. I, I can actually tell you why. It's because this is one dimension of the big five personality test. And so it's 100 questions. Each dimension is five or Got a fifth. Okay. So it's 20. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you're right, because it's scale to one to five. So it's just you scale to 100. So make friends easily, warm up quickly to others. I show feelings when I'm happy. I have a lot of fun. I laugh a lot. I take charge. I have a strong personality. I know how to captivate people. I see myself as a good teacher or leader. I can talk to others into doing things. I'm the first to act. I'm easy to get to know. I don't keep others at a distance. I reveal a lot about myself. I often get caught up in excitement. I'm very enthusiastic. I have talent for influencing people. I don't wait for others to lead the way. I don't hold back my opinions. And I have an assertive personality. That sounds like an asshole. <laughs> Some of them are interesting. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah, like I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with that person. No, I'm joking. I am that person. <laughs> oh, man, that's scary. That's, uh, that's perfection. I don't think so. I think, but you know, there's, I think there's yeah. degrees to that because actually every single thing there, I'm, that is me, but in different like gradations. Ah, uh, uh, you got more of one. I've got more of one other, than the yeah. other, yeah. but I've got it. I've got them all. How does the autism spectrum dovetail to this description? Introversion, extroversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really sort of a personality. Right. Um, and, you know, I've met plenty of people who are diagnosed with autism and are very extroverted. What about the person who is introverted until they're extroverted? So they have certain situations, and I know people like this. Yeah, They don't have a word to say. And then when they're around me and one other friend, they're freaking nuts. Like, I mean, they're mad. They're like a madman. And then you get them outside. It's like the frog. <laughs> that frog is just like, hello, my baby. Hello, my dog. Right? And then the, he says, hey, I got this frog. And he's like, ribbit. So what? what is that? Well, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think that... Is this a frog in the top hat and cane? Yeah. Is this the one I'm remembering? <laughs> and he's yeah. like, oh my God, I got this frog. It's a dancing and it sings frog. And dances. Okay, right. And, right. And then as soon as the people leave, they're just like, hello, my... <laughs> <laughs> See, there are performers and athletes like that. Yeah. The, I knew players before the game, nothing going on. Cross the white line, go out on the field. Onto the pitch. Yeah. I said that right. The field. On the pitch. The on the pitch. field. Thank he you. He said field. Yeah, I know. I, He's been here too long. I am, <laughs> <laughs> they become a very different person. Very, very different. So it, it's that kind of almost light switch moment that Chuck's talking about. So what I'm saying is if that person who's an introvert but has their extroverted kind of supercharge and they get that all the time, will that make them the same as an extrovert being happy over a period of time? Like... Okay, so I think what you're getting at is all this like neuroscience that I'm describing about like how we benefit from interactions and how we don't benefit from being isolated, it all fits within the complex nature of our lives and how we're influenced on a daily basis. And so we're trying to fit these like really specific neuroscience pieces, puzzle pieces, into interactions that are constantly changing. And so one of the sort of exercises that I encourage is for people to do introspection and ask themselves, like reflect on how was the experience I just had, the social experience. I, I call this idea social journaling. You come home from an interaction and you jot down some notes. You could use a template. I have a template in the book too of like a bunch of prompts, things that matter. By understanding what social situations you feel the most comfortable in, you can start to sort of curate your social diet, you know, the interactions you're taking in. So it sounds like your friend feels super comfortable and capable of being themselves and being really outgoing in this certain context that you're describing. And maybe, you know, certain athletes, when they're around their teammates, they may feel like they can open up. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's important, you know, to, to find that identity and self-expression is, is important. And I can guarantee that if you ask your friend to, you know, on a scale of one to 10, if you gave them a survey after you hung out, how much did you enjoy this experience? How, how's your mood? They probably feel much better after those interactions okay. where they are more extroverted and they are more sociable than the interactions where they're sitting there quietly. Okay. Uh, so we know all social interactions aren't the same. There's right. different levels, there's different engagements. How does the brain react to an in-person encounter as opposed to a virtual? And before you get to that, yeah. surely there's a difference between walking to a room of people you know and walking to a room of entire strangers. Mm. And personally, I'm completely comfortable in a room of strangers. There's just more people to meet and to learn what they do. That's how, that's how I view it. But I know people who just are only comfortable with friends, and they don't see that as an opportunity or anything mm -hmm. positive. Yet, it still fulfills the tribe 
yeah. sense that you're around other people and that should boost your chemicals, the good chemicals. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm just the opposite. Uh, I, I want to walk into a room of strangers because they don't know me and they're like, they don't know what an a-hole I am. <laughs> was my, all the people who know me are just like, God, that guy's here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>